Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Father Martin, I want to welcome each and every one of you for, especially this weekend, as throughout the Archdiocese, we learn how to become good stewards to support Archbishop Kirch's mission and his appeal for the Catholic Services Appeal this year. And so, brothers and sisters, as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, in my thoughts. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have 
let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given to me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I prefer her scepter to throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison to her, nor do I liken any priceless gem to her. For all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, silver is an unaccounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because her splendor never yields to sleep. Yet all good things come to me in her company in count, countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O oh Lord, how long? Show pity to your servants. Dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exalt and rejoice all our days. Give us joy for the days of our affliction, for the years when we looked upon evil. Let your deed be seen by your servants and your glorious power by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. Oh, give success to the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus was setting out on a journey. A man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and the mother. He replied and said to Jesus, Teacher, all these things I observed from my youth. Jesus looked at him, loving him, and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven, and then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, children, how hard it is to enter into the kingdom of God. It is, easier to pass for, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were excitingly anxious and asked themselves, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Everybody. As Deacon Bob just said in the proclamation of the Gospel, all things are possible with God. And how true that is. But as we've prepared you, as we have written about and talked about and shared at the Masses last week, this weekend is the Catholic Services Appeal. Now all the parishes throughout the Archdiocese, on behalf of our Archbishop Joseph Kurtz, are speaking to their people about making things possible. Not only for God, but for others. As I've mentioned many of times, and I'll say it, uh, until I turn blue in the face. This is one of the most generous parishes I've ever been assigned to. 
and you have your opportunity to continue to not only to pray, but to give. Not for Hardin County, not for E-Town or for St. James, but for the entire archdiocese. Now, having been a seminarian uh, for seven to eight years, I felt those effects of your generosity. When I worked in the Office of Evangelization, I saw how the Catholic Services Appeal helped so many offices in the Archdiocese. So many people were fed and served and clothed and educated and taught because of the CSA, the Catholic Services Appeal. It is a great honor that we have one of our sons return home to speak to you all. Mr. Tony Cecil, one of our seminarians for the Archdiocese, this is his home parish, a Bethlehem grad, and now studying theology at St. Mindred. What he's about to do isn't easy, because I had to do it as well as a seminarian. And I guess every parish that I was speaking at, their numbers went through the roof, and they kept asking me to come back. So good luck. <laughs> it's an honor to have Tony here to speak to you about the life of a seminarian and how your generosity uh, has helped him and others. So, Tony, welcome home. Good evening. Now, I haven't taken the class in seminary to figure out a wireless mic, so I hope it's okay I'm back here. Some people consider me kind of weird. Uh, when you think about it, I'm only 22 years old, and I'm in the seminary. I started seminary when I was 18. Probably not exactly normal. And naturally, that causes me to get a lot of questions, and that's okay, because if you do know me, I love talking, so I love answering questions. One of those questions is pretty simple, or at least it seems so, because it's one word. Why? Why am I doing this? Why am I in seminary? Don't I want a job with a lot of money? Don't I want a wife? How about children? Haven't I ever been in love? That last one's kind of interesting because love is kind of a crazy thing. Love is something that compels us to want nothing but the best for someone else. It's something that draws us outside of ourselves. How many of you have ever been in love? Husbands, you better raise your hands. Is that true? Love brings you outside of yourself. And in our world, especially for my generation, our society so often tells us that that's wrong. And I'm convinced that love is the reason that 2,000 years ago, a man who committed absolutely no crimes was nailed to a cross. It's the same reason that three days later, his tomb was found empty and the world can never be the same. And it's the same reason that 2,000 years later, we gather here to encounter his very person in his body and his blood. And really, love's the answer to the question that I get all the time. Why? One of my favorite saints is Saint Therese. And she once said that in all vocations, love is everything. And I think she said that because our vocation is a gift that God gives us. It's a path that he allows us to walk down that helps us love the best. And that's why I'm in seminary, because I feel like priesthood is the way that I can love. I feel like priesthood is how God is asking me to love. And I'll admit, it's not always easy. It isn't easy living in a huge building with 120 other men. Just picture that for a second. It wasn't easy when I was in college in Indianapolis to sit on the street with homeless men and talk to them, even though I had no clue who they were. And it isn't easy for me to go to the nursing home every Wednesday to visit Mary. Mary is an elderly lady with Alzheimer's. It's not easy to sit with her and pretend that I know exactly what she's saying as a stream of random words come out of her mouth. It's not easy to sit with her and comfort her when she's sad and starts to cry, but she can't tell me what's wrong. It's not easy to stand in front of your home parish and ask people for money. But I wouldn't change it for the world, because it's beautiful. 
It's beautiful to live with so many people who are striving to become the best that they can be for someone else. It was beautiful to sit with those homeless men and to let them teach me about appreciation and perseverance. And it was beautiful this past Wednesday when I visited Mary. It was beautiful when she had a rare moment of clarity and she looked at me and she smiled and she said, thank you for being here. It isn't always easy, but it's beautiful and it's always worth it. Now, in addition to all that, we have to go to school too. We have to sit in class, we have to read a whole bunch of stuff, write papers, take exams. In fact, next week is our midterm exam week. And one of our professors said something that explains why we're in school. He said this, you're in school because the people of God don't need stupid priests. He's kind of blunt. <laughs> he said, God became man to take away your sins, not your brains. So that's why I'm in school. Between school, formation, ministry, and attempting to have somewhat of a social life while living in the middle of nowhere, seminary keeps us pretty busy. And if you ask any seminarian, I guarantee you they'll say the same thing I'm about to. If it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for the people of our diocese, or even the people of our home parish, we wouldn't be able to do it. This is my fifth year in seminary. And every time I meet someone and tell them that my home parish is St. James in Elizabethtown, they tell me that I'm lucky. And I believe it. Words cannot even begin to express my appreciation for this family, for the love, the support, and the prayers that you constantly give me. In May, I graduated from my college seminary in Indianapolis. And it's because of you. Every time I look at that degree with my name on it, I can't help but thank God that this is my home. In August, I moved to a new seminary, St. Meinrad. If you've never been to St. Meinrad, it's not like Indianapolis. No. <laughs> but I know that I can do it because of your support and your prayers. And I'm not the only one. There's 16 other seminarians studying for our archdiocese, and you're the reason that they're in seminary as well. And I'll be honest with you, besides sometimes being challenging, seminary is also pretty expensive. To educate one seminarian for one year, it costs between thirty-five dollars and $40,000. This weekend, we as a parish begin the good work of the Catholic Services Appeal. The CSA is here to help the church do what she does best, to love, to give and to not count the cost. And in the Catholic Services Appeal, there are two main funds. First, there's a general fund, and that helps with all the stuff that Father Shane talked about earlier, all the ministries throughout the archdiocese, all the different offices. And then there's another fund, and that one goes directly to seminary education. So all 17 of us are directly impacted by that support because it means we get to stay in school. That fund exists to educate the men who feel that God is asking them to love as a priest. So please, first join me in prayer. You all are pretty good at that. Join me in praying for more vocations for our archdiocese and pray for the seminarians, and I promise we're returning the favor. And if you're able, join in the work of the Catholic Services Appeal because the list of lives that are impacted is really endless. If you have any questions about me or Catholic Services Appeal or vocations, I'll be happy to visit with you after Mass. And before I shut up, I just want to say I'm really glad to be home, so thanks for having me. Uh, in light of everything that Tony had talked about, and I agree 100%, the last thing the church needs are stupid priests. But the last thing the church needs are people who aren't able, who are able to give but don't, right? And it's not just money, it's prayers. It's community, it's worship, it's love, it's support, it's a helping hand. And you all do that so well. And, and I echo everything that Tony has said. You know, we have another special guest here. My mother is here, and my dad is here, and my sister is here. And this ties in great with what I'm going to say about this, because my mother would always say, Shane, get your homework done now, because if you don't, you're never going to want to do it. 
So you need to do your homework now. At the end of your pews, you have these white cards. All right, if you'll take one and pass it along. Now, you can wait if you want, but I promise, like that stubborn, obnoxious little kid, I was regretting waiting to put my homework off to the end. Do it now. All right, we have pencils. There are two things to do. At the bottom are your contact information, your name, your address, all that, how you intend to make your pledge. At the bottom in the box is your amount that you're either enclosing, enclosing or pledging. Okay, that's pretty important. Checks are made payable to Catholic Services Appeal. On the top, because everything is done electronically, you have the option of filling out and having your credit card information or debit card information or whatnot. We'll need that as well. Okay? If you're able to make a donation now, you know what you're going to give. The Lord has been preparing you. You've thought about it. You can enclose it and seal it and we'll drop it off in the collection plate before we prepare uh, our altar, all right? If you run out, if you want to fill out three or four in someone else's name, no. Uh, Jennifer Hartledge Moran, our Director of Mission Advancement and Stewardship, is here, and she'll be around to help answer any questions along with Tony, Father, and myself, okay? So, again, in the words of my dear, wise, sweet mother, do it now. Don't wait, all right? And if you need to think about it and fill it out after Mass and drop it in, our ushers will help you. But Jennifer uh, and, and Janet are back there now, so be as generous as you can. With God, all things are possible. And how true is that in this great parish? Because you make it possible. And give thanks to God for that. As a people of faith, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe. One God. Confident in God's eternal love and concern for our needs, we offer our prayers and our petitions. That the church may effectively lead the faithful to true treasures of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. For our clergy, our seminarians, 
and all who are called to religious life, that they may continue to grow in wisdom and allow the Lord to enter into their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our that we may have the grace to respond to God's invitation to give ourselves to all who are poor and weak, especially the dying, the forgotten, the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For single parents who desire marriage, may God help them grow in perfect love and fill them with trust in his loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the people of our parish family who are burdened with illness and suffering may be aided by the prayers of others and comforted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for women who are expecting pregnancy with unexpected, for women who are unexpectedly accepting pregnancy and be filled with anxiety, may the Blessed Mother help them to know that they are not alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Spirit may open the hearts of all, the support, of all who support the, this year's Catholic Service Appeal with a generous gift. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the faithful departed, let us now pause and remember your servants, Willis Pruitt, Teflon Sario, and who have gone before us as a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the tensions of this Mass, for David Crawford, Norman Crawford, and Dennis Keyes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, we thank you for everything that you have done for us and continue to do for us. Help us to find in your holy word the source of truth and wisdom, for we make our prayers always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 601, All That We Have, 601.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit.
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our God, our Lord, our Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We stand as we sing our communion hymn number 659, Blessed Are They, 659.
Blessed are you. 
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just want to add my uh, welcome to all of our guests who are with us this afternoon, and especially to Father Shane's mom and dad and his sister Heather. Uh, welcome. We're really happy that you're here. And just one question, uh, Mr. Duvall. Did you bring your checkbook with you? <laughs> Mom has it. Excellent. Just want to lend my own uh, support to the Catholic Services Appeal. This is a critical way that Archbishop Kurtz of the Archdiocese is able to really help those. Do you remember right after, as actually the Sunday of Pope Francis's, uh, when he departed Philadelphia to go back to Rome. And if you remember, we talked about that he reminded us of two things. Make sure, he told us, when he was at the World Meeting of Families, to take care of your young folks. Do you remember that? And to take care of your older folks. Catholic Services Appeal helps us to do both, that, both of those things in the Archdiocese. Not only with Catholic schools, but a myriad of other ways does Catholic Charities, lots of organizations and agencies of the Archdiocese reach out especially to our young folks. Does exactly the same for the older folks. I just learned actually two years ago that part of Catholic Charities, which Catholic Services Appeal supports, they have staff members who are ombudsmen for older folks who are in nursing homes. That if families are struggling, they're worried about some kind of lack of care, whatever it might be, those staff members at Catholic Charities can help those families. I just learned that, I didn't know that. There's probably other things that you don't know that the Archdiocese is able to do through the Catholic Services Appeal. This morning, St. James, the family of faith, buried Teofilo. He and his family were immigrants from the Philippines. They came. He worked like crazy to support his family, his children, and his grandchildren. And it's through the immigration services of the archdiocese that are able to lend a support to people just like him. So I just encourage you, I've ramped up my contribution and my pledge, which means that Father Shane's not gonna get a Christmas gift this year. <laughs> but that's okay, right? Lastly, I, I just want to say a word of thanks to Tony and Sean McKinley's folks are here as well, so actually sitting right in front of the Duvals. And Sean is a son uh, of St. James as well. So that thirty-five dollars to $40,000 is going to support Sean's seminary education as well. He'll be ordained next May. Just want to say to you, you know that there are times when we might think the church is on the downswing because of you and because of him, we're not on the downswing at all. The church is gonna be in good hands for years and years to come. So thanks for being with us, thanks for coming home and for sharing that with us. And I just want you to know from my behalf, you are weird. <laughs> but you know what, this one and me Almost all of the priests are really weird. And if you go back to who the Lord calls, that's who he calls. And I'll share this one quick story before we ask for the Lord's blessing. My very first assignment at Mother Good Council Church, I've been there maybe three, four months. School had started. It was school open house, and there was a dad and a kindergartner there. So the kindergartner got so excited when he saw me. 
well, that just puffed up an already overly arrogant young priest. And I went over and spoke to them, and the little guy just couldn't wait to tell me something. So I bent down. He whispered in my ear, my dad, who was standing right there, my dad thinks you're weird. <laughs> That's probably the grace of God, so Tony, just keep being weird, and all will be well. Thank you. And I'll end by saying, along with Father Shane, thanks for your generosity. It's palpable and evident day after day after day here. So God bless you all. The presider gets the last word. You'll love your Christmas gift. <laughs> One uh, announcement. Uh, it, October is Respect Life Month, and as we did last weekend, the Respect Life Committee, they're at the side doors. Again, if you'd like to sign up uh, for your name that will appear in the News Enterprise beginning of next year. And if you have any questions regarding pro-life, uh, please see them as well. Thank you for being here with us. What a great, beautiful day, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And school starts on Monday, so don't forget that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, message, by the way you live your lives. <laughs> Number 606, how firm a foundation, 606. Yeah.